With the January 6th, com 6th committee's public hearings over, all eyes are on one man when it comes to holding Trump accountable, Attorney General Merrick Garland. Folks despair he won't do anything. But in a provocative new piece in The Atlantic, Franklin Foer lays out the reasons why he believes an indictment is inevitable. Joining me now is Franklin Foer, national correspondent at The Atlantic. Frank, thank you very much for being here. Coming Pleasure. Coming to the Sunday show. Um, congratulations on, a, on a, a fabulous piece. Thank you. Um, you spent months reporting this, reporting for this piece. You even sat down. Yeah. With, with the attorney general. Um, you acknowledge he didn't tip his hand. He didn't yeah. say whether he was going to or wasn't going to. But So explain to the viewers why you believe, in the end, the attorney general will indict the former president. So I tried to study the man, the way that he thinks about the law, his instincts. He's renowned for being this incredibly cautious person, and he is a very cautious person. I talked to one of his best friends, and he told me that he doesn't like driving with him because he drives <laughs> he drives so slowly. But, um, I, but I looked at the way that he talks about the Department of Justice, the way that he thinks about the rule of law. And I look at the case, especially the Mar-a-Lago case, where mm -hmm. Trump has really just uh, thumbed his nose at the Department of Justice, which is one of the things that Barrett Garland loves most in life. And he's really uh, acted as if the rule of law doesn't apply to him. And so much of Merrick Garland's career has been about enshrining the rule of law in the practices, procedures, and norms of the Department of Justice. All right, let's talk more about, about uh, Mar-a-Lago yeah. and the toe-to-toe -to -toe yeah. that the attorney general went with Trump, which was surprising. Yes. Was, was Donald Trump's reaction to the search a pivot point, a turning point for the preternaturally cautious yeah. Merrick Garland. Well, so I should say, I think that there's a continuum that happens over the course of this summer where Garland is in this place where he's got this really panoramic vista about American life, that the Justice Department touches everything. And I think he could see the threats to democracy emerging. And I think it started to change the way that he thought about his position and his job. And then we get to this moment where the Mar-a-Lago case comes and the president, the ex-president, accuses the Justice Department of planting evidence. And he launches this vicious assault on the FBI and the Department of Justice. And I do think that that did have the effect of, I mean, Merrick Garland is somebody who's never going to be radicalized, but it kind of had the effect of making him much more confrontational. And so I think that's been the hallmark of the way that the Justice Department has dealt with the Mar-a-Lago case. Um, his confrontational um, um, response to Trump, did it surprise people within DOJ? You know, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not, again, the department is so careful about talking about <laughs> ongoing investigations. Right. But I would say that even before then, I was talking to top people at the Justice Department, and they described to me how a different Merrick Garland was emerging over the course of this job, and that they were surprised as they got to know him and as they got to watch him walk work, that he was more aggressive and confrontational, more concerned about the fate of democracy than they had anticipated when they went into their jobs at justice. You know, one of the, the things that I've had as a touchstone for me in watching the yeah. attorney general is keeping in mind that he was the lead investigator on the, the federal government's investigation of the bombing in Oklahoma mm -hmm. City. How formational was that for him and how he views um, the role of attorney general now. I think it was extremely formational. He he asked to be put on this case, which was like Ma like Mar-a-Lago or the January 6th case, a very emotionally fraught case where yeah. people saw some grave injustice done and they wanted justice done quickly. And Garland's response to that was to really just emphasize getting it right above getting it done quickly. And so he was very, very meticulous. He did, he, he took the long way around to get the convictions in the case, but he got convictions that stuck. And that's the key thing for Merrick Garland. When he brings a case, he wants it to stick. He wants a jury to, to get the verdict that he desires, and he wants the case to survive appeal. How much is the prospect of violence weighing in on Merrick Garland's deliberations as to whether to indict the former president. See, I think it cannot help but enter into one's calculus as one thinks about it. But I think that Merrick Garland's going to do his best to shut that out. That there's he's really in a no-win situation. He'll either uh, he'll either anger the left or he'll anger the right. 
And so he's not going to be popular at the end of this. Right. The Justice Department's legitimacy is going to get challenged no matter what. And so I think in the end, it's about just making the call based on the law. And I think that's where he's going to land. Right. Um, last question for you. Garland has said, Attorney General Garland has said many times, quote, no one is above the law. Um, you write that he, quote, clearly gets frustrated that his answers fa answer fails to satisfy his doubters. But it says something that so many people don't believe him or, more, a more accurately, believe that Trump will get away <laughs> yes. with what he did, right? Yeah. Well, that is Trump's biography, right, is that he's constantly <laughs> eluding accountability. But I think that it's also the approach that the Justice Department has taken has been a, has been uh, incrementalist, that it's 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 hard to see this results. And in our culture, we want instant gratification. Right. So the idea that somebody could be meticulous, kind of anally retentive, following the evidence and building this case in, in the way that the textbook suggests the case should be built is something that just kind of offends a lot of our sensibilities. And so he's really kind of an old fashioned person doing this the old fashioned way. Um, boring is the word that comes to mind when thinking of, of um, Attorney General Merrick Garland. But that is actually probably the, his number one superpower for when he does this, no one can accuse him of like flying off the handle. That this is deliberate, <laughs> right. a deliberate decision.